We start, and today we're going to talk about the uh, diesels and the chronic inflammation. And as usual, we have uh, two people for you, for the audience. One is a basic research, and in this case, is the Heinrich May. Uh, he has a lab in the Deutsches Rheumaforsum Syndrome, and another from a clinical part is Tobias Alexander, who actually dealing with a lot of patients, so will also tell you his experience about the B cells in chronic inflammation. And we start with this basic research and move to more clinical stuff. Please. Thank you, Andre. So, thanks for the invitation, and I'm uh, very happy to have the opportunity to talk here today. Uh, and that we, that so many people find their way uh, inside here, despite the good weather outside. Um, so, I will give an overview about uh, basically uh, B cells and B cell development and how they uh, contribute to, to chronic inflammation. Um, so, as most of you probably know, the cardinal function of B cells. Uh, in immunity and in immunopathology is the production of antibodies. Uh, it's what they are known for. Um, and uh, this, this basically, is in a very simplified way, uh, works like this, that you have B cell. Uh, B cells are lymphocytes that have an antigen uh, receptor with which they can recognize uh, antigens. Uh, and in, if, if antigen binds, uh, the B cell gets activated and differentiates into uh, a cell that is not uh, expressing the B cell receptor on the cell surface anymore, uh, but it um, secretes uh, the, antibody, uh, the antibodies now, uh, which have the very same specificity as uh, previously the, uh, the membrane-bound uh, B cell receptor. And uh, this secreted antibodies is now uh, what, uh, what uh, makes an immunological effect. So uh, it can, uh, antibodies can neutralize antigens um, or, or uh, also uh, bind to, to uh, cell-bound antigens. Um, besides this very known function, uh, B cells uh, also are very efficient uh, antigen-presenting cells, uh, so they can uh, take up, uh, via the B cell receptor, they can take up antigen, they can process it, uh, and uh, uh, present peptides of that antigen uh, using uh, the MHC2, uh, which they brightly express. Um, most recently, but actually not, not only recently, um, uh, several labs have, have dealt with um, another function of B cells, which is the production of cytokines. Um, and as I will show you, it's not yet clear, or that there is no consensus definition uh, or result uh, whether uh, only like activated B cells um, secrete cytokines, uh, or whether it's uh, sometimes or always a plasma blast or plasma cells uh, that have a dual function and secrete not only antibodies, but also cytokines. Um, and uh, yeah, again, I think this is quite interesting. So, I, as I said, B cells are lymphocytes, and um, you know that lymphocytes uh, have a very, uh, are parts of the adaptive immune system, and have the ability to very specifically respond uh, to, to, to a, uh, a huge variety of antigens. And this is achieved uh, by that the B cells and also T cells that generate a huge diversity of, uh, of specific uh, antigen receptors. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is done during the differentiation. Um, and later on, when a B cell has found its cognate antigen or is activated by cognate antigen, uh, B cells can further maturate and uh, be selected for, for uh, good affinity and for improved affinity. Um, and this, uh, together with the antibody glass, which uh, happens in a, in a structure called the germinal center. Um, and uh, the, the, the type of antibody class also determines what kind of effector functions uh, the B cells or the plasma cells, um, that the antibodies have. Uh, last but not least, an important feature of B cells is uh, the expression of uh, immunological memory, uh, which is very important for, uh, for the function of B cells, uh, not only inflammation, but in chronic inflammation, so it mediates the chronicity uh, of the B cell contribution. Um, however, B cells are not only activated by antigen, uh, there, is, uh, there are additional ways how to activate uh, B cells alone, at least in, uh, in, in the cutter dish. Uh, or in vivo, also uh, additional um, signals uh, contribute to what the B cell response actually look like. Uh, this includes uh, cytokines, uh, for instance, from the cells or uh, T cells. Um, 
microbial or viral material which, which activates or impacts on B cells via toll receptors and uh, co stimulatory co -stimulatory molecules. And the B cells, different from T cells, they have the ability to actually see the antigen in a three dimensional manner. So, um, while P T cells uh, can, can recognize peptides, uh, which is rather two dimensional or on at least not three dimensional. Uh, B cells can really see the shape uh, um, uh, or the three, the three digit structure of antigens, um, and you can actually achieve B cell activation by only incubating it uh, with the antigen. So, um, antibodies usually have a protective function, um, but in, 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 uh, in autoimmunity, so a special kind of subfraction of uh, chronic inflammatory diseases. Uh, uh, antibodies are also pathogenic and they can um, exert pathogenicity by different means. Um, so uh, antibodies uh, can, or autoreactivity, autoreactive antibodies uh, can be antibodies that bind uh, to uh, cell surface antigens, um, which are, for instance, uh, platelet uh, glycoproteins, and, uh, which is an important factor in autoimmune uh, tomocytopenia. Um, or also to a desmoglein, uh, which is uh, a cell adhesion molecule uh, expressed uh, in, uh, or targeted by autoantibodies and, and, and pemphigus, a skin, uh, a skin blistering disease. Um, second, um, antibodies can contribute to inflammation by forming immune complexes, so between uh, an antigen and uh, the antibody. And excess formation and deposition of these uh, immune complexes uh, initiates an inflammatory cascade uh, where, where uh, cytokines are produced uh, from, from uh, myelin cells which are recruited uh, to the site of uh, immune complex deposition. There's also uh, a rather rare form, but um, the case that antibodies uh, do not um, induce necessarily an inflammatory response, but they can modify uh, the function of the receptor they bind to, such as in myasthenia gravis. Um, and finally, uh, we, we know that uh, IgE antibodies, a special class of antibodies, is strongly implicated in, in uh, allergic reactions. So now we look at uh, how uh, autoreactivity can, uh, uh, can occur. Um, so for this, we, we go into the, B, uh, the differentiation of B, B cells, which starts with uh, common lymphoid uh, progenitor differentiation in the bone marrow. Um, the B cell uh, development occurs uh, over a couple of phenotypically distinguishable steps. Um, and uh, in, at, at the stage um, of, uh, of pre-B cells, uh, the, the antibody diversity is generated. Um, by genetic recombination of antibody fragments. Um, and uh, further on, the, the, the B cell uh, matures into finally what we call mature B cells, or which are in the periphery uh, detectable as naive B cells. And I, as I told you, at first the, the, uh, the repertoire of B cells is very broad uh, and includes a, a, an enormous fraction of autoreactive cells. So we all make autoreactive cells, which are, however, in healthy. Um, in a healthy condition, uh, eliminated uh, by a mechanism uh, called central tolerance. Um, so, uh, if, if a B cell receptor is made genetically, uh, there are several options. So, if, if the, if the um, recombination is uh, completely unsuccessful, uh, the, the B cell is, so, so to speak, returned and has, has a chance to, uh, to, to again uh, modify uh, the genetic makeup of uh, the antibody gene. Um, if, the, if, the, uh, if the setup is um, successful, uh, it can further differentiate. And um, only if, uh, if the cell is, uh, um, expresses a visa receptor that, that um, can bind to self-antigen in the absence of um, uh, co-stimulation, uh, the B cell is either deleted uh, or becomes allergic. And in lupus, it has been found uh, by the group of uh, uh, Rosenzweig and uh, with Heather Wadermann at this time, um, uh, that early B cell tolerance is defective in patients with SLE. Uh, so um, in, in, in healthy individuals, there's only a very low frequency uh, of naive B cells uh, that, uh, that uh, express uh, autoreactive B cell receptors, uh, while um, uh, in lupus, uh, the, the frequency of, of autoreactive cells is 
uh, strongly increased. <coughs> Visa differentiation is uh, distinguished, or we, we distinguish between two different lineages, at least in the mouse, uh, so B1 lineage and the B2 lineage. The B2 lineage is rather the classical scheme uh, where uh, Visas mature in the bone marrow and uh, in the periphery uh, uh, migrate through transitional stages um, and can give rise to, to uh, mature B cells, memory B cells, and then to long and short lived plasma cells. Um, while the B1 lineage, uh, which is importantly implicated in some autoimmune uh, processes uh, via the production of natural antibodies, uh, which not always have a very clear specificity and uh, also not very clear um, uh, induction. Um, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the B1 lineage uh, B cells are not very clearly defined in humans so far. So this is a quite complex scheme of the germinal center. The germinal center is where the affinity, affinity maturation happens and uh, somatic hypermutation occurs um, and also immuno, uh, the, the antibody class switch um, is mediated and this is all uh, performed by the key enzyme, uh, the, the AID. Uh, which which uh, mediates uh, these um, uh, these mechanisms, um, and it is important to know that uh, the, in the germinal centers, B cells undergo undergo multiple cycles of uh, <coughs> of, of affinity maturation. So the the, and, uh, the 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 B cell again, or the, the antibody genes are again um, uh, modified uh, in a in a random manner um, by hypermutation, and only the best fitting. Um, B cells uh, get promotion and uh, can move on and uh, to differentiate, while the others die, basically. Um, when uh, this is accompanied by proliferation of B cells, um, and so by by, by migrating uh, between uh, uh, different zones of the germinal center, uh, th there is a um, coordinated uh, change between um, maturation and selection of cells. The output. The output of germinal center uh, reaction are memory B cells and plasma cells, um, which at the same time um, <coughs> represent the most important uh, uh, components of, of B cell memory. So it's a reactive memory uh, mediated by memory B cells. So, so this is not an instant um, um, uh, function of B cells, but uh, they have to be reactivated in, in order to become uh, again, plasma cells, and uh, there's also plasma cells uh, which uh, which can be long-lived, and as long-lived cells uh, secrete antibody um, and um, radiate the protective membrane. So, uh, structures that are very similar to to uh, germinal centers are found in different uh, uh, chronically inflamed tissues, such as in the synovium or the kidneys. Um, and uh, in a work which, which was actually done on on, uh, on normal donor, so not an autoimmune donor, um, B cells. Uh, Thomas Tiller, also in a group of Hedda Wademann, found uh, that uh, the, the autoreactivity uh, can occur de novo after the germinal center, so by basically introduced by the somatic hypermutation. So altogether, uh, when when uh, B cells receive. Uh, uh, a signal from autoantigen uh, in order to proliferate and uh, differentiate into autoreactive memory B cells and autoreactive plasma blasts. Uh, this works together with an inflammatory cytokine milieu, which again boosts uh, B cell differentiation. And so you have uh, basically you see a self-perpetuating uh, response where the affinity uh, through multiple germinal center reaction, the affinity of uh, the, the the antibodies expressed, the autoantibodies increases. Um, and uh, an autoimmune uh, memory is built up in the B cell compartment, uh, which importantly um, contributes to the chronicity of the disease. And so, uh, memory B cells are also um, very, very difficult to treat. So, as they are memory cells and not proliferating, um, and maybe we, we hear some details about this. So, now, how um, once we have uh, B cells and memory B cells, how we get to the stage of plasma cells. Um, uh, this is uh, achieved by B cell activation by antigen in the secondary lymphoid organs. So uh, one product is again, uh, in terms of a 
on the center reaction the memory B cells, uh, and the, the other products are plasma blasts, some of which uh, remain in this organ, um, but others um, migrate via the blood uh, to, for instance, the bone marrow. The bone marrow is the most important home uh, of, uh, um, of systemically induced plasma cells. Um, and during this uh, transition, the cells uh, start proliferating and they also start proliferating. And now in the bone marrow, we have two different uh, types of plasma cells. Uh, we know that from the mouse, and there's also recent evidence from humans, uh, which are short-lived and long-lived plasma cells. And the differentiation uh, scheme is not really clear whether the fate of becoming a long-lived pl plasma cell is predetermined at early stages uh, in the B-cell differentiation or whether it's a conditional process uh, that um, drives, uh, that makes short-lived plasma cells become long-lived plasma cells. In the bone marrow, the survival of plasma cells is uh, conditional. So once you isolate the, uh, the plasma cells, uh, they rapidly die, um, which is why plasma cells have been uh, quite as short-lived for a very long time. Um, and uh, today, the view of how the so-called survival niche uh, in the bone marrow looks like uh, contains two important uh, cellular fractions, which is stromal cells and eosinophils, uh, which can provide uh, the, the plasma cell with uh, adhesion cues and uh, cytokine cues. So IL-6 is an important factor, April is an important factor, and the VLA uh, for a BCAM interaction. Uh, there's uh, also a cytokine produced by stromal cells, it's uh, CXCL12, uh, which is believed uh, not only to, to recruit and to keep uh, the plasma cell uh, in its niche, and, uh, uh, yeah, but also to, to attract uh, perhaps uh, additional nerve cells uh, which uh, here uh, support the plasma cell survival. And uh, it's not only a, a phenomenon that we, that we see reflected in, in, in mouse immunology when we look, well not we, but uh, the group of Max Lipka looked uh, at uh, serum titers uh, of single individuals, um, antibody serum titers, uh, over a very long time, um, he could demonstrate uh, that these titers are amazingly stable. Yeah? So for decades you have almost no, uh, no difference uh, in, in, in the uh, amount of uh, serum antibody titers against uh, a variety of antigens. And uh, so while this is a result of this study, uh, we also know that the half-life of immunoglobulin um, uh, it's just uh, about three weeks, and uh, this is all already long, so other classes have much shorter half-life. And so the, the, the immunity, the humoral immunity and memory is uh, regulated at the, at the levels of plasma cells and plasma cell homeostasis. And so we uh, and others uh, made our mind up how this could uh, work, and so we came up with a model that uh, when plasma blasts are generated, or we, we also ask the question, okay, when, when we have new immune responses uh, leading to new uh, plasma blasts, how can these be accommodated in the bone marrow? Um, and how the, can these become long-lived? Um, because uh, actually in, in, in healthy adults, we have stable immunoglobulin titers. Um, so basically, the idea was, okay, there, there, there should be no space anymore for additional plasma cells. Um, so, we propose that uh, there is an exchange uh, of plasma cells during such immune responses. Yeah, um, Plasma blasts enter the bone marrow and uh, they compete with uh, resident plasma cells for survival niches. Um, and if this, uh, survival, uh, this uh, competition is successful, the new cell can, um, uh, can remain in the survival niche while the older one is mobilized. And we barely see this in terms of, uh, of levels of pre-existing titers. Uh, because uh, basically we, we send in a monoclonal population, but we mobilize uh, a polyclonal population. So the, the, um, uh, the, the reduction of uh, titer of uh, pre-existing pre titers, uh, pre-existing specificities would be neg negligible, so we could not see it. Um, in our recent work, we have identified two different uh, subsets of plasma cells, uh, actually many more, <laughs> in the human bone marrow. Uh, which uh, are distinguished by CD19 expression. Uh, we performed a lot of essays uh, to, to characterize these two different uh, subsets and uh, came up with the idea that uh, some, or the CD19 negative plasma cells may 
um, pr uh, provide that we run the long lived immunological memory as opposed to the CD19 positive plasma cells. Uh, since uh, the CD19 negative plasma cells uh, are more mature, have a more mature phenotype, have upregulated BCL2, an important survival factor of plasma cells, um, contain less proliferating plasma cells, and also are stable during B cell depletion uh, in humans. And um, this was this idea was uh, very uh, impressively um, confirmed, not for bone marrow plasma cells, but here for human intestinal plasma cells. Um, a, a recent, uh, recently published study dissected to, uh, three different uh, subsets, actually not only defined by CD19 expression, but also by CD45 expression. Uh, and they used uh, radiocarbon dating um, to, uh, to uh, analyze uh, the, the, um, the age of the plasma cell subsets. It's an average age. And so they came up with this uh, kind of table that uh, CD19 positive, 45 positive plasma cells, uh, they could no find, uh, they could not find increased levels of uh, the radiocarbon isotope C14, <coughs> uh, while the levels of C14 and the other two subsets uh, suggested uh, that they are between 10 and 20 years old. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, this should, this is likely to be the same in the bone marrow. So from this result, we now follow the hypothesis that. Uh, the different plasma cell subsets may reside in distinct niches in the bone marrow and uh, where they could underlie different regulation. Um, so perhaps one, one uh, of the niches would allow rather for the survival of the uh, single of individual plasma cells, uh, while the other niche uh, could uh, maintain plasma cells um, by uh, allowing for, uh, for their proliferation. So we also analyzed uh, whether uh, these two different types of plasma cells uh, would relate somewhat to autoimmunity or not. Um, and uh, since there is a CD19 directed therapy available, this would, was quite interesting. But nevertheless, uh, <coughs> in, in a lupus patient, uh, we analyzed, uh, we found uh, uh, DSDNA, so autoreactive plasma cells in both subsets. And we could also find both subsets uh, in, the, in the inflamed synovium of rheumatoid arthritis patients. So there's no clear indication. Uh, that uh, CD19-directed therapy would be of benefit here. So the memory plasma cells uh, also uh, limit the, the impact of B-cell depletion. So when, uh, when we perform B-cell depletion uh, as a therapeutic <coughs> means by uh, rituximab, a CD20 monoclonal antibody, uh, we can very efficiently reduce or, or delete basically the B-cells from the blood. Um, while uh, there's a couple of studies that demonstrate that we cannot eliminate the autoantibodies, and this is most likely due uh, to uh, long lived plasma cells uh, which are not uh, targeted by rituximab. And it's not only the, uh, the antibodies that persist uh, despite therapy, it's also uh, the autoantibodies uh, that, that occur long, long time before actually the onset of symptoms or diagnosis. Uh, and this is not uh, the same for the different antibodies, uh, it's quite different um, uh, according to specificity. Um, but some, like Ro and La, you, you see that already two thirds of the patients, of lupus patients, uh, are positive in their serum for this antibody test uh, at five years <coughs> because, uh, before diagnosis. Plasma cells. Um, uh, have long been also doubted whether they are uh, indeed pathogenic, uh, and so this uh, I want to just show this slide from uh, from uh, Cheng from Pykeep's uh, group, um, uh, which is a, a kidney pathology analysis for immune complexes in the kidney of uh, different mice, and so this is uh, the first line uh, demonstrates uh, uh, immunopathology or, or uh, immune complex uh, immune complexes in the kidneys of a lupus uh, mouse model, the NZPW model. Um, and the second row, uh, which is basically a very similar result, uh, comes from a normal mouse uh, that has been transferred uh, plasma blood from NZPW mice. And uh, if you look at just a normal mouse, or a normal mouse with transferred B cells, uh, not plasma cells from NZPW mice, uh, or from just uh, after transfer of normal plasma blasts, uh, you cannot see this kind of uh, complex of the kidney. So um, I also want to come to uh, the production of cytokines by B-cells. 
uh, this has been a very active and uh, interesting uh, topic over the last years, and uh, I, I here show just a, a, a quick example of uh, human B cells, so uh, from the blood, which have been stimulated with uh, PMA, PMA and genomycin, and you can see that these B cells are capable of producing TNF alpha, IL6, uh, GMCSF, and also IL10. And basically, there's if you go through the literature, there's a long list of cytokines, uh, so that in the end you believe B cells can make uh, each and every cytokine you imagine. And uh, these different cytokines uh, impact on, on a variety of immune uh, cells, so on T cells, but also in genetic cells. Um, and a very uh, important yet uh, completely different scope is uh, that uh, uh, lymphotoxin uh, derived from B cells uh, is very important for, uh, for the formation of tertiary lymph tissues and piles patches, um, and also involved in the, in the microanatomy uh, anatomic setup of the, of the skin, for instance. So, and um, it's not only the inflammatory cytokines that B cells produce, it's also uh, IL-10, a very uh, uh, popular uh, immunoregulatory cytokine. Um, and the, mainly the group of Simon Filatro has uh, shown that this IL-10 uh, is uh, important from uh, not, not only the IL-10, but the IL-10 from B cells is, is important uh, to control uh, the, the uh, immunopathology of an of a, uh, autoimmune mouse model. So when B cells are either delete or so absent, uh, the, um, <coughs> the immunopathology persists, while uh, with normal B cells, uh, the immunopathology uh, uh, vanishes again. And uh, they could uh, indeed show or demonstrate that this is not only uh, due to the B cells, but to, due to the IL-10 produced by B cells. So I hope I could show you that B cells uh, can contribute and are important players in, uh, uh, in inflammation and uh, particularly autoimmunity, uh, and that they can do so by producing cytokines, antibodies, um, and I didn't talk about antigen, uh, antigen presentation. Um, there are several pathways of how uh, antibodies can exert pathogenicity and um, autoreactive B cells can occur by loss of tolerance uh, but also uh, be de novo in introduced by somatic hypermutation um, and I hope I could convince you that plasma cells uh, regulate water antiprodactions and are a very valuable uh, therapy target. Um, Cytokines from B cells are important for uh, for uh, lymphoid organ anatomy and uh, can also uh, contribute to inflammation, but also can limit uh, can limit inflammation depending on the cytokine. And last but not least, I want to hand over to Tobias uh, by sharing this slide with you. Um, it's two case reports basically on. Uh, the, after B cell depletion therapy in a, in a, in a non Hodgkin lymphoma patient, uh, but also here in, a, in, in patients with uh, RA, um, if you treat them with rituximab, uh, they, they better control their original disease, um, but at the same time they develop a, a psoriasis arthritis. Uh, and so uh, this is used as an argument uh, whether or not uh, B cells should be entirely depleted. Thank you for your attention. We usually have questions afterwards, but is there a couple of burning questions while uh, Tobias is getting ready? Uh, can we?